Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I will be finally installing a deep heat projector in Ziggy's tank. Yes, she is going where no leopard gecko of mine has been before. She is going without a heat mat. So let's quickly look at the items I'll be using for today's video. Obviously the deep heat projector itself, the holder and bracket, the safety cage, and a very important piece of equipment, the thermostat. Now from this little price list, I can totally, totally understand why you would be reluctant to swap from a simple heat mat and thermostat to this kind of setup. I do not blame you at all. I see this heating system as maybe a little more advanced in a way, like a heat mat and a thermostat will do totally fine. I mean, I've my eldest leopard gecko will be 13 this year. She has always had a heat mat and a thermostat. And I definitely think if you're a beginner and this stuff confuses you a little bit, heat mat, thermostat, totally fine. But I'm always trying to improve my gecko's lives in some sort of way. And for me, this sort of seems like the next step up. It is certainly more expensive, but I really hope it's worth it. Anyway, the thermostat I'm using today is a Hapostat dimming stat. This is a preferred type of thermostat to use with a deep heat projector. If you don't have Hapostat in your country, just make sure you're looking for a dimming stat. I will say I think I use a pulse one with my other deep heat projector that I have for my crested gecko. Technically you can use it, but I think for the bulb to last the longest, the dimming one is preferred. I will say if you've ever considered using Hapostat, I've used it for a very long time. The brand usually produces high quality items that are reliable. So Habistat is very good in my eyes. Now, if you're wondering why I've decided to go from a heat mat to a deep heat projector, there are a couple reasons. So number one, Ziggy has been rather inactive over winter. Now you would expect that from a leopard gecko, but it's like she does not move from her hide. She will sit there in the same sort of place all the time day and night. She'll move for food, she'll move to go to the loo, but she's just not generally that active. And I know she's healthy and active when she wants to be, but um, with this heater, it will not only heat her cave, but it will heat some of the surrounding rocks and the floor. So I hope it encourages her to explore a lot more. It will truly like energize her muscles and hopefully she'll be less reliant on a small area on the floor to just heat up on. And number two, this particular heater does more than what a ceramic heater or heat mat can actually do. It produces infrared A and B. In a sense, it kind of mimics how the sun delivers heat. So the heat will go deep in the muscle tissue and truly, as I said, truly energize your reptile. So I'm pretty excited to try this out. So the first thing I did was measure the distance between the top of the cave and my UV light as the heater will be set to heat the top of the cave and I want to make sure Ziggy will be safe laying there even when the light is on. There was a 10 inch gap which is good because you need 10 to 12 inches between your gecko and the light if you're using a shade dweller like me which is 7% UVB. The next thing I did was see how the guard looked in the tank. Now, to be honest with you guys, it looked hideous. It was too big, it was bulky, and there was about a two inch gap between the bottom of it and the top of the cave. Now, it is good practice to use a guard, especially if you have reptiles that may climb, for example, a bearded dragon. And certainly if your gecko can reach this, you want to use a guard. However, I was able to figure out a way to install this without a guard in a safe way. First, we drilled a fairly big hole in the top of the vivarium. This was so the light fixture could just fit into it. The bracket would prevent it from dropping all the way through. I would also like to point out at this point that Ziggy had been moved out for a while she was in a temporary tank. I then screwed in the deep heat projector and I then simply put the thermostat probe through a vent on the roof of the tank, set it in place, plugged the heat in and we were set to go. Okay, so this is already noticeably hot. I can actually feel it. When we use heat mats, I guess we only really feel it when we put our hands down, whereas straight away, just my hand here, I can feel that. I've also put in my thermometer probe and my thermostat probe. Now the reason I did it here is it's about an inch out of the diameter of the heater and I've actually been advised to do that. Um, if you have read the book that I was talking about in my product video, 
um, it really explains why. Uh, I do have the thermometer here though just so we can get a bit of a reading but I also have a laser thermometer. Now I'm not going to move Ziggy in straight away because I feel that this heater is trying to adjust and make sure everything is correct so I don't think it's safe quite yet to move her in. I'm going to leave it for a bit and then come back. Later. So the normal thermometer is reading 25 degrees. I've been around with the laser thermometer, so this is about 27. This is 22, 24, 26. This is 24, weirdly enough, but I think it will take time to heat. The great thing when you use slate and rock is it will retain that heat. Um, this could heat up from it as well, so and this little bit could. So there's lots of different opportunities for her. And even the rocks here, I think they were actually only measuring about 30 degrees so they're not even overheated which I'm really happy about. She, I doubt she can get to this, I really hope she can't. It is far out, it, I don't know how well it looks but it's far out and high so I would be surprised if you are wondering it was that uh, vent that she escaped out of but I think that's as far as she can go. I will of course keep an eye on her all evening, uh, keep an eye on the temperature all evening let's quickly go and get her to move her in. So I moved Ziggy in. Naturally, I expected her to be a little wary. It's a whole different experience. She'll be feeling heat in a different, more effective way. So um, yes, I expect her to be a little skittish, a little wary and kind of shy. What I will do is I will document the first few weeks or so of her using this deep heat projector so you can kind of see how she gets on with it and what my thoughts are of it. I have used it for a long time in my crusted gecko and honestly she is the most active little thing so I really hope it's the same for Ziggy so if you'd like to see that make sure you do subscribe and turn on the notification bell because uh YouTube's only answer to the reason people aren't getting my videos in the subscription box or just any notifications at all is because you have to put always or all notifications or something like that with the bell. If you could just do that, that would mean the world to me. I don't overly upload, I do it every four days, so hopefully that doesn't bug you too much, but if you could do that, that would be awesome. And before we go, if you are wondering, uh, though technically her heat mat is still in her tank because I'd have to rip the whole tank apart basically to get it out, it's not actually on. If you use this heater, you'll only need the heater. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.